for you and your family, for your health. Africa Health Network, only on VOA. And we're back. It's time for our Africa Health Network update. And health reporter Lino Mudu is here with another very informative uh, report. Hello, Lino. Hello, Vincent. Hello, everyone. Well, Ugandan police have embarked on an anti-Ebola awareness drive in Kampala aimed at continuing the, containing the spread of the disease, deadly virus within the city. The program is decimating basic facts about the epidemic and the program is decimating basic facts about the epidemic and educating the public on how to avoid contracting the disease. The campaign is being conducted in police stations throughout Kampala City. The exercise has the exercise has triggered by the recent outbreak of Ebola in Kabale district. And agencies say there has been a sharp rise in the cases of cholera in Niger this year. They say it is partly due to the high number of Malian refugees who have entered the country to escape fighting in their home. Cholera has been on the rise in part of the Sahel in recent years. The disease usually occurs in poor neighborhoods. The United Nations Children Fund UNICEF says people live living along the Niger borders are receiving help, but more resources are helping to, helping to treat cholera. Health officials have launched campaigns to educate residents on cholera prevention and to show people how to treat their drinking water and improve on sanitation. Habibatu Jibo, a resident of Kandaji Island in Niger, is already taking steps to prevent the disease. The day I left the dispensary, I went to the market and bought water purification tablets, and I started using them. And Niger officials say they have counted over 155 cases of cholera along its border with Mali. They have also cited cases of meningitis in at least three regions. Well, just one year after gaining its independence, South Sudan is having difficulty implementing a health system. Health experts say many communities in the country are lacking access to basic health care services, particularly those who live in northern regions close to the border with Sudan, where fighting continues. Hospital admissions have increased over the past three months, and medical teams say patients are arriving in very poor health. Children are the biggest casualties of fighting and often become victims of malnutrition, pneumonia, and diarrhea. Bakita Kamis, only surviving child, is being treated for malnutrition. The day before we planned to bring my daughter to the hospital, she died. My other child was alive for four days after I gave birth, and then she started to cry. She died on the way here. And Dr. Giorgio Monti is a consultant pediatrician with the International Committee of the Red Cross at the Malakal Teaching Hospital. He said the conflict, shortages of food, and lack of qualified medical personnel are all contributing to a dire situation. Unfortunately, in the last three months, there was some problem here, just 20 kilometers north in the border, when they started fighting again. And immediately they closed the border. That means uh, the, there is no food in the market. The few food we have is uh, really expensive. And we immediately saw an increasing of number of nourished baby. We have no power 24 hours a day. We have no good lab. We have no uh, radiology. We can have uh, enough drugs, but even the supply of drugs is not, is not so easy. And the big problem is the lack of education lack of education in doctors because we don't have university, we don't have school of medical here, and we don't have school for nurses. And that's our Africa Health Network report for today. For more information and health news, be sure to visit our website, africahealthnetwork.com. Back to you, Vincent Dimiake. Well, thank you so much, Lino. Excellent report. And be sure to watch Lino Madu's Africa Health Network report every Tuesday and Thursday right here on In Focus. Well, it's the world's biggest stage right now, but there are no medals in protesting 
at the Summer Olympics. Well, still to come, why scenes like this are rare these days or in the British capital, we'll get the story from our London team when we come back. Straight Talk Africa, celebrating 10 years of Straight Talk with Shaka Sali. Straight Talk has a new look, a new format, as we launch into our second decade. Shaka Sali, his guests, and the Straight Talk audience, bringing you new insights and in-depth discussions on the issues shaping the African continent and the world. It's Straight Talk Africa with host Shaka Sali on Voice of America Television, Radio, and the Internet. Welcome you back to In Focus. Well, the summer games in London are winding down, and over the past 10 days, there have been very few political demonstrations. But as VOA's Brian Patton reports, some groups have decided that protesting during the Olympics would do more harm than good for their causes. Maria Wenda and a small number of protesters from the Free West Papua movement staged a demonstration in front of the Indonesian embassy in London during the Olympics. She says the group hopes the international media here for the games will also tell the world about their cause to end what they say is Indonesia's occupation of West Papua and expose ongoing human rights abuses. This is very important and big meaning for us and for West Papuan people because nobody knows and what the people of West Papua are being crying and shouting for help and nobody knows and nobody hear about this. In East London near the Olympic Stadium, Gobi Sivanthan with Tamils Against Genocide is staging a hunger strike. He wants the international community to investigate the Sri Lankan government for what he says are crimes against humanity committed against the Tamil ethnic group. I'm targeting international media because we don't have our media. We don't have any help from most of the international media. So I, I'm here to get attention by democratic way and peaceful way. In a vibrant democracy like Great Britain, political protests like these are common and legal. But during the Olympics, there have been relatively few such demonstrations. And those that have occurred have not disrupted the games. Security analyst Valentina Soria with the Royal United Services Institute says British authorities have increased police and security forces during the games and let it be known they would not tolerate any demonstrations that might endanger public safety. We allow people to protest uh, and to express their, their dissent, but always to a limited, ex always to a limited extent. And so, in, in so far as it doesn't really necessarily escalate into bigger, you know, widespread disorder, which then becomes a security threat in itself. You. Well, and that's our show for today. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a good night. Good night. Mm -hmm.